Alright, so I'm going to take this weird model I have of myself and convert this, hopefully, into something. I have a laser cutter coming today. I'm going to see if I can cut my head out of cardboard and turn it into, like, a weird desk jar. So a few things I'm going to do first. One of them is... Blah, 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 I'm going to mesh, smooth these eyeballs, and then I am going to Boolean them into the head. Mesh Boolean Union. Huzzah. Alright, delete history on that just because I think that's good practice to do. And uh, there's a hole in the bottom of this model because I was doing I was using this for something different originally uh, when I made it. So I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm just gonna quickie mesh fill hole. Lovely. Alright, so a few things we need to do before we get started. Uh, we need to figure out how tall we want this, and in this case I'm going to say a very arbitrary six inches, uh, which is about 152 millimeters, will be sufficient. Um, so I'm just going to move this up so that it is approximately that size. Again, I don't really care. The tolerances that for me don't matter really. Oops. Uh, don't really matter for this. So I'm just like, cool. Random sizes. Um, all right. So I'm going to just save this file. Great. Um, and we need to decide how we want to slice this, if we want it horizontally or if we want it vertically. Um, in this case, so I cough, had actually started filming this before. Uh, and then I was like, I kept forgetting to do things. So I, uh, oh, look, there's a piece of geometry just randomly floating around the top here. Cool, get rid of that. Um, so my first one was vertical. I'm going to decide that I want to do this horizontally. And there's, because I want, I want a few things with this. I want this to actually be um, hollow on the inside so that I can, like, put things in this. And I want a little... I'll add a hinge to it later, but I want the top piece uh, to also be separate, so I can, having it, I think, flat maybe will be a little bit easier for that. Um, so before I do this, uh, what I'm going to do is just extrude this entire model, boy, but not like that. And I'm going to say, I want this maybe, I don't know, but, uh, what's it, I'm going to grab my, figure out basically how thick you want the walls of this, and I'm going to say 10 millimeters seems like maybe it should be sufficient for this. So I'll enter a value of negative 10 in here. Um, and obviously there is some cleanup that is going to need to be done on this. Alternately, I think what will work significantly better is rather than me trying to clean up that absolutely hellish monstrosity is to just add a similarly shaped hole in it using that as the sort of strange little template uh, for the, the overall shape and size that I'm roughly looking for. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just scale these a little bit and be like, cool, that's probably uh, an appropriate, the more or less shaped head. Um, although it does seem like the whole thing just needs to be skinnier. So just be like, cool. And maybe, boy. Um, and maybe to do a little bit of somewhat arbitrary tweaking face back of this. Um, I've never actually made one of these. So we'll see. We'll see how this works out. All right, so I'm going to just casually get rid of that because it's horrendous. Um, and now that we have this sort of in place, uh, I'm just going to check this like within the existing head. It seems like it's doing a pretty okay job at um, like I can definitely widen that top portion. Um, uh, all right, so I'm going to just scale that up a little bit. Same thing maybe up here and be like, yeah, whatever, close enough. Um, I don't really know what this is going to hold, to be honest, but whatever. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, um, just save a back of a bit because I'm paranoid, and then I'm going to mesh Boolean difference this little hole in the head out. So that, okay, and you'll notice that uh, in doing that, I definitely had some clipping happening, so I very clearly need to fix all of that in this one of the reasons that I like backups. All right, so I'm going to just grab these and just with soft select, just very aggressively uh, wiggle them in. And I guess while I'm doing that, I don't know, pull this out a little bit. The, it seems like the, the bottom of the face that could be could be slightly thicker if I was, or like have more of a hole for storage if I was so inclined. Um, all right, so now let's try this again. Cough, 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 cough. cough. All right, so. Mesh. Boolean difference. Cool. And just make sure that I don't have, you know, holes in my model this time. It's good. So that's exciting. 
All right, so now I can actually go ahead and slice this, which is the fun question mark part of this. So what I'm going to do is basically just make a little shape for my cardboard, which I've already pre-measured this, and it was uh, uh, four millimeters tall. Four, darn it, not 0 0.01. I was like, um, all right, so we have this. And we just want to make sure that this kind of like cuts through our, um, you know, person. Um, so what I'm going to do is just align this very roughly with the bottom of this. Um, it's not, not going to be perfect and that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to freeze the transformations on this. And I'm going to, I would rather this be a little bit like barely under the model so it doesn't make like a super tiny up at the bottom. Not that it really matters. So. The fun thing is that if you keep moving this up four millimeters, you're going to get just like even lines basically in the shape of the cardboard. So if we move it up eight, you can do a fun thing with Boolean. So I'm going to go edit uh, duplicate special and I'm going to move this up eight units, just do 23 slices, uh, which takes us well over the top of our model, which is exactly what I was wanting. So basically we can just use some uh, some janky Booleaning stuff to um, very efficiently sort of cut this apart. So I'm going to mesh combine these, delete the history, uh, and then I'm going to just, again, duplicate another version of that, because I'm super paranoid. Um, I'll put that stash in my other stash. Stash. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab both of these objects and duplicate them and do a mesh boolean intersection. Alright, so that should give you a, a wonderful prison stripe head. Um, but basically, it looks like this, and you'll see that um, it includes the little hole that we put in the top, so once you glue these together, you'll just like get a weird little uh, storage object, basically. Um, but we still have one of the additional heads, so I'm going to grab that, grab the little um, thingies, and do a mesh boolean difference. And this should give us the opposite version. So now it looks like we have kind of a full head. Um, it's going to be super terrifying when this is cut out. Like, I, I think the eyes are definitely going to lose a lot of detail. Like, it's going to be just really terrifying. Um, thinner cardboard or a larger model uh, would fix this. Probably also a different slice orientation. Like, vertical, I think, would preserve the eyes better. But, like, whatever. Hardcore whatever. Um, I am curious to see how this turns out. Because I, I designed this, and it does print supportless on an FDM printer. Barely, but it does. So, it should be interesting. I don't know. I make no promises. All right, so now what we need to do is um, come in and mesh, separate all of these. And here's where stuff gets like really annoying and I like totally don't want to do this, but whatever. Um, we need to align these so that they basically get like a render out of this that will give you the profiles of each of these pieces. So I'm going to assign these um, just a... I'll use an Arnold Matt shader. Um, uh, AI Matt, great. All right, so I'm just going to come into my top view and I'm going to. Yeah, sure. Let's, let's just do this. And I'm just going to make just an enormous line of these going just in some type of order, just so that if I want to come in and like label these later, I am able to actually do that. Um, it probably would have made more sense, as I'm like looking at this now, to do this uh, starting from the right. That's how I read, but whatever. Um, and then once I'm done with this, I'm going to do a render, and I'm going to just render out basically the profiles of all of these. And then I'm going to uh, put that in Adobe Illustrator or whatever other vectorizing software is your preference. And like I think the ears are definitely going to get be better in this version than they would have been in the last. Um, and then I'm going to arrange these in a way that hopefully prints in a slightly more optimized way. Uh, and also possibly try to like number these a little bit because uh, there is no earthly way I'm going to remember like what direction these slices are supposed to be otherwise. We'll see. It's going to be great. Um, Apparently I'm barely at the bottom of the head, uh, as evidenced by I've just gotten to the bottom of these uh, little nubbins. <laughs> uh, oh great, and we have floating earpieces. I was hoping to avoid that. I might get rid of this. Um, 
just shamelessly, I'm just going to shamelessly cut off pieces of my ears. It's going to be great. Um, actually, I've already cut them off because I, uh, when I did the mesh separate, uh, they are their own piece and I've just not been selecting them. So I'm just going to delete those later and be like, who needs earlobes? <laughs> earlobes are for losing, really. Um, all right. So that was apparently the last one. Um, I'm gonna lay these out later, so I'm just gonna ignore the fact that the the layout of this makes no sense. But and like some of these pieces, I could definitely you know stash in the in the head pieces. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is just pop open the Arnold Render View. I'm gonna save this because zero faith in Maya. Um, and I'm going to just for funsies make another um, slowly lowering with all the little pieces of the head pretty terrifying um all right so i'm going to assign another new material and just make this another ai mat i'm not really sure if there's a great way to do this it's like the literal first time i've done this i want the background to be white and all of these pieces to black which they should be when i get the render going if i can find where the render view went oh cool. great um so we have this and basically this is going to give you a profile of all of the pieces so what i'm going to do um because this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, um, I guess, logistically or whatever, uh, I'm going to aggressively adjust the render settings. So I'm going to just go and I'm going to create a new camera, camera, and this is going to be oh, here. There's a, there's a thing to make this an orthographic camera. I feel like I'm just slowly losing my mind and like, that is but i know i've seen it it's like ah oh, yes making an orthographic camera uh you know what oh wait nah, screw it <laughs> just gonna render we're just gonna forcibly render this through the top view it's gonna be amazing um all right so we're going to show a resolution gate on this and like i don't care if this is 19 by 20 or whatever so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna see what happens if i render this is like a 2k image um and we're just going to zoom in until we can see all the pieces which i think is actually easier to see in the wireframe as uh, 10 pixels on matter all right so let's do the render view again my render settings render view great and we're rendering from top shape so if we play this we should get i set this to like 20 pixels what did I what did I do here? Oh no, it's just taking a minute to render. Shoot, and I just stopped it. Rage. Um but no, it's still rendering. Okay, so it's just gonna it's just gonna take a minute. It took eight seconds. Alright, so I think possibly that would honestly be fine. Um it does seem like I can zoom in a little bit more on this. Basically, I'm just trying to get like a, a little render going. So I'm gonna zoom in to make these as large as possible in frame, um, which I'm testing on my other screen with the, the render. Um, and then I think I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna say screw it, and I'm gonna try to make this like a 4K image. Um, just because I'd, I'd rather have it be overkill. Um, I don't know how much resolution would be good or not, but like realistically this is getting cut out of 4 mil cardboard, so it's gonna, it's not like it's gonna be not chunky or anything. Um, I have so many issues with this art window it is consistently insanely sized and is just crashing and being crazy so i'm just gonna do this to get this render out i think it's because it's a 4k image it's like what the hell are you trying to do to me um that's definitely why my screen is like enormous right now great uh see if we can actually find our render. okay so this is definitely going to give us i think sufficient resolution to hop into illustrator and be like great let's let's do the things um all right so let's go ahead and save this um i will just call this uh self caricature six inch horizontal slices um and we save that and then we should just be able to pop open the illustrator um 
and just drag and drop that file into there. So that'll give us this just enormous, ridiculous image. See my low poly sphere on the inside. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and image trace this. Yes, continue. Definitely gonna yell at you if you get a 4K image, but now we have a, a nice um, little version of this thing that is, uh, shoot, I overlap on some of the ears. Well, I'm gonna fix that because <laughs> it's gonna bother me otherwise. Um, yeah, so just like make sure you don't have that. Make sure you don't have overlap on the ears, and I'm just using uh, Alt Z to adjust that view. Um, all right, so we're gonna re-render that and pull that back into Illustrator. Um, and I'm actually so I am not entirely sure. Um, I've never actually worked in Lightburn. I've been taking some notes on it, but I think it's probably going to make sense maybe to adjust these once they're in Lightburn and then add text on it. <laughs> Find out. Um, I also need to size these for whatever my cardboard size is. Max build plate is like a 15 by 17. Um, so, done. So, We'll figure all that layout stuff later, but this is more or less the process of what I'm doing, just not stupidly, and at some point I am just going to go through and label these, I guess, from top to bottom or bottom to top, like whatever, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so I know what order to put these back in, and I'll just do like a little gentle engraving towards the inside of each of those, um, and I think that'll work hopefully pretty okay.